Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Burned by Stone Circle Games. This is a two-player hidden movement game where you're going to be playing as either the burned asset or the agency looking to come collect that burned asset. Uh, the agency also has its own unique director hidden among them, and if the asset is able to defeat them before the agency defeats the asset, then the asset will win. We'll go through the game, the setup, and of course how to play, and then we'll cover it with my review. Let's get into it. So to begin setup for the game, the first thing you do is determine who we will be playing as the agency and the burned asset. And you can obviously switch back and forth between games. The agency setup is pretty simple. First, go ahead and select a symbol on the bottom of one of your location cards. In this case, I selected the palm tree. It's the beginning setup location. And place all those cards face up and remove any additional ones that don't have the palm tree off to the side. You're not going to use them for this game. Place the C's with C's, D's with D's, A's and B's, etc. next to each other to form kind of the grid of the board. Shuffle the combat deck and put it within reach of all players. And take your player resource card. Take the acrylic standees and set them aside. Maybe even give them to the burned asset player. And then you're going to select your team of agency officials. You're going to have the body double for the base game as well as the director. And then five operatives. Put them face down and hide them within each other because you don't want the uh, burned asset to know which one is which. And place them all on the grove. The burned asset is also going to get location cards, the exact same ones, but they're going to go into their hand. They're like a hand of cards that allow them to secretly move around the city. To begin the game, go ahead and give them the player reference card. Uh, allow them to place one of their locations as the location to where they're aiming at. A location where they are currently at. Uh, it can't be the grove though, that's where all the ass agents are currently, so the burned asset can't be there. So I just looked at the terrace here. And the rest of the locations will go in their hand. There's also a bunch of unique starting setups. I just chose the rookie setup, the base mode setup, which is going to come with a bolt action rifle, a claymore, binoculars, a pistol, smoke bomb, and knife. You can take any two of those as your starting items and place them face down beneath your character card, your active equipment, it'll even say. So the left hand side of your card is where you'll place your sneak movement. The right hand side is where you'll place your run movement. Where you're aiming at will be at the very top and then your two equipment will be at the bottom. Any extra equipment can be set aside as well as extra location cards. You'll be using those throughout the game, so set them aside near you as well. And I would suggest even giving that player these acrylic tokens. There's the Overwatch tokens and the damage tokens. From there, you should have a few extra things like maybe extra operatives, extra equipment that you're not using and extra locations. You don't need those, like I said, move them aside and bam, you're ready to go. Playing burned is pretty simple. Basically, the agency will start first, followed by the burned asset, and you'll rinse and repeat going back and forth. On the first turn of the game, as the agency, there's an action called search. You won't do that for the first turn, but you will do it for every other turn here and after. And you're just simply going to read the turn and go from step one, two, and three. Once you've completed that, you will do the burned assets one, two, and three, and rinse and repeat. It even says how to win. So for the agency, you need to kill the burned asset, which is basically to damage the burned asset four times. In order for you to win as the burned asset, you need to kill the director, which is uh, among one of among many of different operatives hidden within the agency that move around the city trying to eliminate you. So in fact, the director can be used as an agent or you can kind of hide him and like divulge where he's going to be and kind of set up booby traps in that way. Uh, it even has a little bit of idea of how the setup works. But either way, the beginning is you're going to move your operatives, move your agents around the board, or you can go ahead and overwatch them. And I'll give you an example. The first thing is I can go ahead and choose to either move or I can either run or sneak for my movement. If I sneak, I'm only going to go to adjacent locations. And an adjacent location is a location that shares a color uh, or a letter. In this case, the grove is an A and the plaza is an A. So it would go from A to A and that would be a sneak. And I would turn my card to say sneak when going to that location. And I could choose any number of agents to share the same space. So I could in fact have three agents go to the plaza and they have snuck. If I'd like to leave an agent in the location of the grove, I can in sneak. And then the rest of them, I can have them run. Running allows me to go anywhere on the board. But when I do so, I'll have to set them to the designated run side. 
And the reason why you'll do that is because there are certain cards that the burned asset will have that can affect agents that choose to run. Maybe it's a weapon that says that they can affect any agents that run. Um, but typically speaking, that's how it will work. It'll be some type of equipment that will affect them. However, it gets you around the board faster as the agency. Any character that didn't move on the agency side can actually choose to overwatch. And here's one in the grove that chose to not move. So they're gonna overwatch the location. Whenever you overwatch a location, the burned asset will take from their locations, the locations that have been overwatched, uh, looks like it is the aimed location, and place an overwatch token on it. This is uh, still able to be used by the burned asset, but it is now revealed. It's a known location that has been seen by the agency. So I know as the agency now that the grove is being aimed at by the operative. I just don't know where the operative is, only that it's being targeted, uh, that agent is targeted, operative is targeting it, the burned asset. Once was an operative, now is no longer one. And after I have either basically snuck going from location to location adjacent wise, or ran, going anywhere I want at the cost of potentially something bad happening, and then overwatched, I'm gonna move on to my next aspect, which is searching uh, locations with agents. Now at the beginning, like I said, the first turn of the game, you don't do so. But just for the sake of understanding the game, let's say it's the second turn of the game, in which case each location with an operative is going to search that location. And how it works is the burned agent is going to reveal each location one at a time. The dam, Am I there? No, I'm not. It's a card in my hand. Nobody's there. You have to reveal that and show that you're not there. The barge? Nope. The lock? Nope. And I'm not in the plaza and the grove has already been revealed. So now the agency has revealed all the locations that they searched. If, however, there was um, an agent, the burned operative or burned asset, uh, was it the location? What will happen is a number of steps. And the first step is you'll check to see if there's any traps that trigger. Then you'll check to see if they exist there, in which they do. Afterwards, you're gonna actually draw a combat card for every agent there that is searching that location. And if a hit card comes up, you're gonna actually place a hit card on that location. So for instance, if this location was the barge, that location we flipped over and a hit would be placed on there. And just like any Overwatch locations, hit cards remain revealed. Now the difference between the two is if I have an agent watching a location by overwatching it, that's revealed for as long as the agent is there overwatching it. However, locations that have been damaged, AKA damage done to the asset or the burned asset, those are gonna be revealed for the rest of the game. So it kind of reduces the locations in which the asset might want to travel in. And additionally, it's a way to defeat them. After four damaging and moves, that will end the game. And if you have multiple agents, for each agent that is there, you will reveal another card and could possibly do another hit. There's misses and hits in the deck. If it's a miss, nothing happens, in which case you'll just shuffle the deck up after you have revealed cards to see what happens. I think it's four to three, four hits to three misses. After you've searched locations, the last thing you'll do is you will refresh agents. Some agents might get stunned from specific effects. Maybe it's a booby trap or a claymore, etc., etc. If they ever get stunned, this will go ahead and rotate them back over to, I believe, the, uh, the sneak aspect uh, or, or the run aspect, I guess, whatever one it is. Um, but it's a way in which it prevents players from agents from searching locations. So you might be able to get stunned. So it's a way of refreshing these guys back. And then after that, the turn is over. You moved your agents, you overwatched locations, you searched them to try and find the burned asset and hopefully attack them, refreshing the agents that were stunned, and the burned asset begins. They can use one of their active equipment. So I'll go ahead and reveal their equipment. Well, they can look at them, I suppose, and they can do one of them if they're able to. Like, for instance, the knife that says that you can reveal your location and then target an, uh, an agent, reveal two combat cards, select one of them, and hopefully hit one of them. Whenever you hit an agent, that agent will die. Now in this case, my location is the terrace, so I am actually not able to use a knife because nobody exists there. So this is only a melee weapon for basically uh, operatives that actually appear there. But I do have binoculars, so I can reveal all agents at my aim location or reveal any one running agent. I'll go ahead and do this and this agent ran, I'll reveal it. It's the body double. I now know that this is not the director. And if the director is killed, this guy cannot swip, swatch, uh, switch places with him because he's revealed, I already know who he is, this is the fake. That's pretty useful. 
uh, then I can go ahead and move and then I can once again aim. So I'll take my locations back to my hand. I'll move any of my damage locations or overwatch locations to the side face up. And I can select to basically move and aim at a new location. And I can always choose an overwatch or damage location to move or aim with, but it's going to be open information for the player who's playing as the agency or the director. So I can go ahead and select new spaces. Now remember, because I was at purple, I'm only able to go to B spaces or I can go to um, the plaza, which is the uh, all of the colors. But if I choose to run, I have to let players know that I'm running. I'm like, okay, I'm going to actually run instead of sneak. Sneak is secret, running. I have to tell you what color I'm going to. So I'd be like, okay, my location is D. So it's the, one of the orange locations, which could be either the courtyard or the fountain or the plaza, which is kind of like the neutral territory. Um, and if not, maybe I just wanted to go from the terrace to like the veranda. I could just place veranda down and I don't have to say anything. And they have to figure it out. I'm going to be in one of these four locations as long as they spotted me, right? And after I have done so and um, I moved and made a new location to aim at, I'm just going to choose two new active equipments. I can take these equipment back to my hand and then I'll select two new ones. Maybe I'll select the claymore, which I can trap the location I'm aiming at or a bolt action rifle, which lets me shoot running agents, a pistol that lets me reveal my location and do a damage to a player, or the knife, which is an even better version. Uh, so I can go ahead and select these two cards and place them face down. And then I'll pass. And it's once again the agency's turn to begin. And you'll just go back and forth. And like I said, the way the game ends is when a number of locations take damage. Uh, you found me at the terrace. I took a damage. You found me at the... Melazanine. <laughs> Melazanine. I'll take two more. And then if you find me again and you do another damage, then the burnt asset is done for. And the same is said for the operatives of the agency. You know, you'll be killing these guys off and eventually you're going to be like, operative. Okay, it passes away. Operative. And eventually, hopefully, you will find the uh, director. Oh, there he is. If you defeat him, you win the game instantly. It's a quick back and forth game of cat and mouse. Let's talk about it. Burned is a hidden movement game for two players, whereas the burned asset is trying to move around as secretly as possible, but for forcibly having to reveal their location from time to time to uh, attack and deal with other players. Uh, you might have to reveal your location because you're using a knife or a pistol, or you might have to just reveal your aimed location when using a bolt action rifle or perhaps a trap like uh, C4 explosives or something like that. And so you are kind of utilizing your location as a benefit and uh, using your aim location as a benefit, even when sometimes it's not so great for you because a lot of agents can show up. Uh, the director or uh, the agency is going to be able to kind of choose. They want to sparingly move their forces around, but at the cost of being picked off one by one, or do they want to go as a big group of people? However, not really spotting me as easily as the burned asset. But if they ever do hit me and search and maybe they reveal, oh, I don't know, five cards from the combat deck, I might take a wide variety of damage. I can take two, I mean, I can technically, technically instantly die if there's enough agents in a location and the deck comes out looking not so good for me. And so you have kind of these little options as you move around the game board. Also, additionally, there are a bunch of different extra locations. You can kind of set it up for a smaller, like enclosed map or a larger one. This is probably one of the larger ones with the uh, palm tree. Uh, there's also a variety of different characters the agency can play as that do different things. I just talked about two of them, which one is the bodyguard, which allows you to kind of, if you kill the director and the bodyguard's alive, you can swap the director with your bodyguard. Uh, and then the director is like your safe house guy, the one you want to keep alive, while the rest of your characters are kind of operatives. They just go around trying to defeat the burned asset. And there's obviously more. Look at the Kickstarter and find out. And then you have for your burned asset, as opposed to its a unique character, what you actually have is a unique equipment set. And you basically can select from a loadout of equipment from the rule book that'll explain what you can do. And I'll just talk about some of them. There's more of them, but I want you guys to look them up. So this is a Claymore. If... Uh, the agents search a location and they searched your trapped location, your aimed location, and it's a claymore, you can do one card of damage for each agent there. Agent one, flip, hit. Agent two, flip, miss. Agent three, flip, hit. Two agents down. A bolt action rifle that deals with these pesky running agents, as well as doing an additional extra card draw for an agent that you're targeting. Smoke bomb that lets the Overwatch tokens remove and you kind of disappear, but only once in a game because it gets removed after you use it, whereas most of them don't. 
Your pistol and, of course, knife are ways in which you can shoot close range, and binoculars reveal things like the body double to give you a benefit early game. And so there's a wide variety of different, like, items that you can use for your burned asset. This is a really wonderful little game of cat and mouse. It basically utilizes a bunch of cards and some tokens, whether they be acrylic or if you're getting them with the wooden ones, they all work just fine. It's kind of got this, like, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, GTA full, GTA Vice City type of a feel where everything is kind of like lucid and vivid, artwork, stylization. It's pretty cool, it works pretty well in my opinion. I like the style of art for the most part. It all functions fairly well and the characters make sense. You know where your characters are and what they're doing. The, the cards are all very simple. You're either overwatching or sneaking or running. And then of course, if they get stunned, which is on the occasion it happens, depending on the loadout for the burned asset. And the asset feels like they're in a tight spot every time. That being said, my one flaw for this game or like minor issue with it is the combat deck. There's four hits and three misses and you shuffle them back as far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. And basically when you draw, if you're unlucky, you might just get misses, while the other player might only reap the hits. And that can happen. That's the luck aspect to the game. Kind of what I would actually prefer is two separate decks for each side, and they're the same deck, and you reveal them as you go through. And so there could be a slight amount of luck, but not as much possibility for this to happen where you just never get to hit. It's not, it's rare, and it's fairly balanced. It doesn't like necessarily always happen where one side gets the benefit, but there is those times where you're like, wow, I just threw three cards at you and I got all whiffs? That's, that's a feels bad moment. Otherwise though, the game is tense. There is strategic placement, tricking your opponents into thinking you've moved when you haven't, trying to select locations where you think that their units are gonna be, depending, no, neither, regardless of what side that the player is on. And each player is trying to keep themselves protected, whether it's the director or the burned asset with unique loadouts, whether it be the specific agents that the, the, the agency has, or whether it be the specific loadout of equipment that the burned asset has. If you're looking for a very light, like very strategic hidden movement two player game, then, and you like the style and art of this game, then Burned is gonna be one I would strongly suggest you take a look at. It's really cool, as long as you don't mind the light, the light luck aspect to the game, everything else really works well. It's fun, it's quick, it's easy to teach, it's easy to play, and you can go ahead and switch back and forth with sides with enough replayability with different loadouts of not only locations, different agents, but also even equipment for the Burned asset. Overall, a solid, fun game that I would I'd play again. In fact, we're going to be playing this again live for sure because it was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Burned by Stone Circle Games. If you're interested in picking this game up, like I said, there's a link down below, which currently is available for you on Kickstarter or if you're watching after the campaign, I'll have a link through the Kickstarter where you can go ahead and purchase the game fully done. All right, guys, check out the website, unfiltergame.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream every 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays, whatnot. We do a Thursday stream. We sell games, talk about games, introduce news and extra, extra stuff like that. We have, of course, the link in the description for the game. And if you'd like, if you appreciate us, hit that subscribe button, bell notification button, so you can see more videos. We produce all kinds of different board game review content and cover a wide variety of games for people who like to kind of dip their toes into pretty much everything mainly Kickstarter related. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to not getting burned by this agency next time.